Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Oh, happy days, boys and girls, and welcome to Real Film Nerds Podcast. Another one. Hopefully this will continue going because there is news on the horizon that the SAG-AFTRA strike is coming to a close soon. They're reaching a deal, so we might get movies next summer. Woo! Yeah, that's great, dude. I, I did read that. Uh, it's 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 a maybe, though. Nothing's Nothing is all the way done yet. Well, so there's SAG, and there's SAG-AFTRA, and then there's WAG, the Writers of Actors. The writers no, of America. Writers right? of America Guild. Yeah. WAG has come t- close to a deal. And if they sign a deal, then the other will probably fall within the next two or three weeks, too. Nice. Nice. That's what I read and heard. We'll see. They're in negotiations. But there is hope, people. We might get movies and TV shows next year. So that would be great. Because I don't know about you, Mike. Things have been slowing down quite a bit. And, uh, you know, it would be nice to have some better movies than uh, what we've experienced, especially this week. Oh, oh, wow. Just had to just had to throw the dagger in, right? Right, right there. Right, right at the beginning. Be like, bam. Well, Mike, I got to tell us, our listeners, or listener, about uh, Real Film Nerds episode number 342, The Expendables 4 or Expend uh, 4 Bulls. I, I'm not sure how you pronounce those. So I'm going with Expendables 4, since there was three before. Mike, uh, why don't you go ahead and give us the rundown of the uh, very sad Expendables 4. Wow. Okay. This is going to be a fun one, everybody. You can already tell. Matt's already just lining it up. Okay. So this is directed by Scott Way. This is written by Kurt uh, Wimmer, uh, T- Tad Daggerhart, um, or Dagger, yeah, Daggerhart, uh, Max Adams, Spencer Cohan, and it's based on characters by David Cullum. This movie is starring Jason Statham, 50 Cent, Megan Fox, Dolph Lundgren, Tony Jaa, Eco Ways, uh, Andy Garcia, Sylvester Stallone, Randy Couture, and armed with every weapon they can get their hands on, the Expendables are the world's last line of defense and the team that gets called when all other options are off the table. All right, Matt. I feel like you have something to say about this already. So uh, why don't you just uh, start us off? Mike, I don't have anything to say other than this is the most disappointing Expendables out of all of them. And uh, I don't recommend anyone to go see this in the theaters. Wait until it comes out on Blu-ray or streaming or whatever. Don't waste your money. This movie was a letdown. Yeah, right. I mean, I guess I wasn't expecting much. I thought it was okay. I, it's, It was another Expendables movie. They're pretty ridiculous. There's, I think if you've seen the other three, this is along the same lines. Uh, I mean, yeah, they're, they're not great, but this, this was a movie and there's some action in it. A little bit of fighting. Yeah, it was okay. So, okay. Let me retract my statement earlier. This was not the worst expendables. Um, I watched three, which I had never seen before. Um, the week of expendables four. So last week I could have just said last week and made it quicker. Um, last week before I went to the theater on Thursday to watch four and, uh, I say without a doubt, three is the worst one out of all of them. But do you know what three has that four doesn't have? And I don't know if this is a spoiler. You can go and look at IMDb all day long and can tell, um, three at least still had the actors that everybody wanted to see four does not have even half the freaking actors of expendables that we want to see. Not even half. Yeah, four really uh, changed up the whole character set. Really, there's only a few of the original characters in it, and uh, I don't know. Like, it was fun to see. Uh, well, I don't know. It's kind of a spoiler, so I'll save that. But you know, it was fine. It was just fine. No, it wasn't. It was 
okay at best. Three is still worse, but three at least had big names. It had like Mel Gibson, Antonio Banderas, Terry Crews. Uh, it was definitely a worse freaking movie by far. Like three was really terrible. I think they tried to get back to form a little bit with four. Now they did say the reason why Antonio Banderas wasn't in this one is because um, he had scheduling conflicts, which I will forgive him for because I know he wanted to be in this one. Um, but Terry Crews, like what happened to Terry Crews? He was in three. He's not in four. Uh, I know some of the other guys have, you know, left the franchise like Van Damme and Chuck Norris and people like that. But uh, uh, I, I want to watch an Expendables movie where it is every single freaking action star known to man doing stupid, crazy ass shit and having fun and a terrible story. And this just, it, it's not the names I want or care to see. Really, Megan Fox? I will spoil that later on. I'm not going to say it now. Um, the story was lackluster, and there's only really two big set pieces. There's the weapons chemical factory in the desert, and there is the ship, and that's it. There's no other real set pieces, which was kind of disappointing. There's, as my mom slammed me on the radio, uh, no, no, there's another one. There's the bar. Well, yeah, but there really wasn't anything that happened in the bar. So two set pieces, that's it. I mean, that's not the Expendables I have come to know and love. I was just let down, Mike. Okay. All right. Well, I, I think my, my sights were so low I couldn't get let down. So it was only um, just keep it even or, or mild bumps, you know, like a little bit higher, a little bit higher. So I think I think your bar was just set way too um, mediocre and you needed to go real low, real low. So yeah, Mike, your your bar was in the gutter, maybe even under the street in the sewer, and I was on the curb. So I expected a little bit, you know, maybe like throwing up into the gutter instead of, you know, being full on on the ground or in the sewer like you, but you went for the sewer. So anything above, you know, shit floating down a uh, pipe is golden for you, right? Uh yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's right, man. Uh, I like how you use the word golden and shit together. You know, golden showers. What what are we going here? What what, what are you talking about? Well, and that's that's from the third one too. I I believe, or was that from this one where they kept joking about the golden showers? That was this one. That was this one. Okay, that was one of the one of the jokes that hit. That was okay. All right, all right. Well, there there you go, man. You you had you. There's the one thing that. The one redeeming quality about this movie was that they had a joke about golden showers and Matt liked it. No. Well, it was funny. I'm not going to say it was redeeming quality. I mean, it was funny. But uh, no, the best part of this film, I'll, I'll just put it out there. I'll say it straight up. Jason Statham. Jason Statham is this movie and he did a good job for what it is. Jason Statham is a great action star. Didn't expect much from the script. He did what he could. But uh, uh, one of the biggest letdowns that I had as well, I mean, I can keep going on the letdowns. Um, you have these two really famous uh, martial art experts in this film. I'm trying to look up names. Oh, uh, 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 um, Tony Ja and um, uh, hold on. The other guy is um, Ko Waris. Where's you go? Ways, ways at WAIs, ways. Yeah. right? Yeah. So. They never fought against each other. No, no, not at all. And that was a huge letdown. So these two extremely talented martial artists, are both of them in the raid or is it just Eco? Uh, Eco's in the raid, but Tony Ja has done a bunch of other movies. He did a bunch of the, um, oh, what are those? Those martial art movies, like, oh, uh, just a second. Yeah, just click on your MDB. Ung Bak. He did like all these unbox movies, so like he's got he's he's got a lot of cool stuff into his credit as well. And so they didn't even fight each other. It was the martial arts cinema experts fighting, like Jason Statham and like other not well known martial art actors, and that was just a letdown because I wanted to see them 
ward out because I bet you it would have been fantastic. Yeah, Matt, we we've seen uh, Eco Ways. Uh, unfortunately, he's getting these movies where he's just not really utilized. Like we saw him in Mile Twenty Two, which we reviewed uh, quite a while back on on the pod, and it was just super disappointing because he's an awesome action star. Who, like did nothing in that movie. Well, he's not like the greatest when it comes to villains i guess he doesn't bring a lot but that's partially you know uh cultural and his not great fluency in english it just is what it is you know i mean i think he did fine but his his villain in this film was kind of hollow but i'm not in here to see him be this badass character actor i'm in it to see him fight and do some badass martial arts and he did okay, but I still don't believe Jason Statham could kick his ass. I really don't. Yeah, no that that was a uh, that was hard to uh, that was far fetched even for me. I had to like lightly press that easy button. Well, I'm just saying there there's there's things in here that could have been a lot better, and they just fell flat. And maybe it's because Sylvester Stallone didn't have as much hands-on as he did in the past three because you know i think sylvester stallone even partially wrote the past three and this one he doesn't have a whole lot of credits on this one other than acting and i think producing and that's it Hmm. yeah so maybe that's it matt maybe that's why some of the stellar cast didn't make it out for this one i don't know maybe they're trying to save on some budget but still kind of get a little bit of a a pop because it's somewhat recognizable because this is the fourth installment into the franchise i don't know dude well my favorite is the original of course number two second favorite number four is my third the worst one is three and we can talk about it i don't know if you want to i guess kind of i mean it's not a spoiler um where it's uh, Return to Form is Expendables 4 is at least rated R. Expendables 3 was not, and I mean, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. When you put them up against each other, you can tell. Like, you got to have that blood, guts, and gore, the ultra violence, the swearing, because that's just what Expendables is, man. That's just what it is. And not to have it in the third one, God, that was stupid. Yeah, I'd forgotten that about the third one, but now that you're saying that, I do remember that was a that was a weird call, man. I guess just to have a bigger audience. Uh, yeah, of course, it was to make more money and have a bigger audience. I mean, Mel Gibson was the big bad in that one. The climax fight between Mel Gibson and Sylvester Stallone in the third one. Again, I'm not to, here to talk about the third one. It's just because I've seen it recently, but I'm just using it to compare. Um, the the climax fight was a letdown. It was really kind of boring. And you know what? The other bad part. It was really quick. I mean, you're like, the whole movie built up to this fight that lasted a minute and a half or so? Really? Lame. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, man. Well, I'll I'll get us moving towards the spoilers because I can tell you're you're running out of uh, things to hate on without... Oh, no. I am not running out. (laughs) Running out of things on on this movie to hate on without having some spoilers in there, so... Um, Matt, what are you drinking this fine morning, evening, afternoon? <sighs> Mike, this is my last week before a month, maybe a month and a half of Oktoberfest. So, Mike, I am drinking in celebration of the first, not first, the sixth annual Harvest Horror Fest, uh, Middle of High Life of Champagne of Beers. Okay. All right, dude. Back to some high life. Good stuff. Well, Matt, in in anticipation of the uh, sixth annual Harvest Horror Fest, I am drinking Blue Point Mother Pumpkin Ale. Nice. I like that name. That's a good name. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it, it was pretty good. So we talked about it, not to get off topic real fast, but I'm just going to do it quick. We've been promoting the hell out of the 6th Annual Harvest Horror Fest, which I don't understand why. I mean, some people like it, some people know. Uh, personally, I'm not a fan of the Harvest Horror Fest, but I do it for my good buddy Mike and I, his love of horror films. But Lisa has talked about it every Friday. I've been on her show for the past three weeks running. She asked my mom about it. And my mom is extremely excited for Harvest Horror Fest because I don't know where the hell this came from. This is a new development for my 
you know, 81 year old mother, but I guess she loves horror movies because that's what she said on the radio on Friday. So we will see how true that is coming for next week's pod where we will tell you what movie we're going to talk about next week, but not right now. Mike. Yes. Most important. No, no, sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Add in, no, please. no, no. That, this is very exciting, man. And and maybe with age, she's like, you know, uh, she likes to be scared the crap out of. I don't know. Who knows? Or maybe she's just getting ready for... Oh, uh, no, that's really dark, so I'm not going to say that. Um, I'll just leave that alone. That's way too dark. I love my mom too much. I can't say that. All right. Well, moving on then, Matt. Okay, Mike. So... Um, now that I'm completely sidetracked, Micah, what is this week's incredible dad joke? I got dad jokes. I don't think they understand, though. Gotta think I'm funny. Other people never laugh, though. Dad jokes. All right, Matt. You're going to like this one. Why was the computer so tired when he got home? Because he's been running all day? He had a hard drive. Oh. Well. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> It was cheese, but it was definitely a dad joke. So, perfect, Mike. And that was from the book. I saw it in his hands, people. Yeah, it's from the he book. He's back to the book. Don't worry, Mike. Your birthday and or Christmas is coming around soon. I will be getting you another one. All right. That sounds good, dude. So, all right, Mike. Most important question of the podcast, besides your horrible dad joke, how does Expendables 4 or Expend 4 Bulls relate? to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All right, Matt. So I'm just going to go with the easy one on this one. Uh, We're going to go Sylvester Stallone. Uh, He was in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and Volume 3. Uh... So he played the character of um, Stagar Ogord. I don't know if I... Stagar Ogord? I probably messed that up. But anyway, so I just thought I would go with the easy one for this one, Matt. You know, Uh, because I could. That's fine, Mike, and you're allowed to do that. I believe it's pronounced Stagar Ogord. So close enough. Okay. All right. So, all right, Mike, that means we are now in the spoiler section. For those of you who really want to see this movie and not have it spoiled, all none of you, um, go ahead and turn off the podcast. Now, uh, I don't recommend you see it at all. I mean, maybe if you're really bored and you're doing the dishes or something for an hour and a half, because what is an hour and a half? I think yeah, it's like hour I think 45? an hour 40, 40 minutes, hour 42 minutes, something like that. Hour 43. Yeah. So that with the, the credits and everything taken out, probably an hour and a half, which is actually probably one of the benefits of this film is that it's much shorter than the other ones. It's a good runtime. It's an hour and a half. But uh, anyways, okay, Mike, let's get into the spoiler section. So since I went first for my horrible opinion on this film, uh, go ahead. You spoil what you would like, sir. All right, Matt. So uh, like I said, my bar was real low going into this, so it could either... <laughs> I don't think it could go any lower. Like you were saying, uh, your analogy of the sewer and the, and the curb or whatever. I was definitely down in the gutters, right? But uh, this this one was, it, it's okay. It's not a great movie. Um, my biggest gripe with the movie w- wasn't probably any of the things that Matt didn't like. It was, uh, I hated the ending. I really hated it. I thought it was really dumb. Um, uh, but other than that, it, it's just a kind of ridiculous movie. Uh, this movie is mostly just Jason Statham kind of solo in it. And, you know, that's a kind of a spoiler there, but, uh, I did like, we're in spoilers. Get on it. Yeah. Damn it. Tell them what happens at the end and why it's so fucking horrible. And Mike, I did hate the end. It is one of the things I really hate about this movie, but it's not the thing that I hate the most all right all right all right well well, i'll i'll get to that matt i'll get you on that in just a second i did really like the um gag of like um a geriatric uh 
Dolph Lundgren, who who's the sniper, and he can't see, but he's like, oh, my scope's got a prescription. Oh, yeah, that was funny, because Dolph Lundgren has drank a lot, his character, throughout these films. And they started out this one saying Dolph Lundgren, you know, that he has gone to AA and he's become sober and he's cleaned up and all this other stuff. And he puts on his glasses and he tries to shoot his sniper rifle because he's the team sniper and he keeps missing people. And then he pulls out a flask at the end, one of the final big battle scenes, and he just downs the whole fucking flask and then he's just on target from then on. That was a good joke. That was a pretty good one. All right, all right. Yeah, I, I, I like that, man. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, Again, not that Mike and I encourage alcoholism on the Real Film Nerds podcast, but there's nothing wrong with the drink every now and then. Right. And um, so that was uh, that, that, that was pretty funny. Um, but no, the ending I really disliked. Um, essentially, we've been led, we get, we, the audience, get duped into thinking Sylvester Stallone's character is killed when really he's not. And it was some stupid, weird plot that didn't really make sense for him to come back. And uh, I don't know, dude, I was like, this is ridiculous. Oh yeah, dude. That that I would say is probably my third most hated thing. Uh, when you were saying ending, I thought you were going to start talking about the nuclear bomb that blew up and everybody was perfectly okay, and the helicopter just outflew the nuclear bomb, which would never happen. And also, there was no EMP, so the helicopter was fine too. Uh, I thought you were talking about that specifically, but the Sylvester Stallone thing dying and coming back, which was fucking stupid, uh, is probably my number two gripe. Number one is the fact that there's not as many superstars of 80s and 90s and 2000s action people in it. Number two is definitely Sylvester Stallone dying and then coming back. Uh, dude, have him in the movie or don't have him in the movie. Yeah. Don't tickle my balls. Just be honest. Yeah, yeah. no, that to me, dude, like, because a lot of the buildup of like Jason Statham, like while he's, you know, doing the stuff that he's doing is because he's, he feels really guilty about losing his buddy, and then he didn't lose him. I was like, "What? This whole movie was based on like this lie." Oh, it was just dumb, dude. I I don't know. Um, they kind of Mary sued Sylvester Stallone in his own franchise and movie. Yeah, which is fucked up. Yeah, dude. I and I don't. And then when he does come back, state them. Doesn't even mark about anything he's just like oh thanks thanks you're back thanks for helping us out and it just rolls on the movie just keeps going there's no anger there's no hatred there's no mention of it later he's it's like two lines and he's like okay cool and that's it yeah and then they're back at the bar which i i I did enjoy the intro scene matt with the bar and him getting back his ring i thought that was yeah that was that was fun but i wouldn't call that a set piece a set piece is you know a big action you know it was still fun it was decent the little guy that, you know, shrimp or whatever. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah, jumbo shrimp. Yeah, jumbo shrimp. There you go. Yeah. No, I, I dude, I thought that was fun. But no, the rest of the movie is just, just fluff and like, well, I don't know. Whoa, Matt, what, what's Megan Fox doing in this movie? Like what? Okay. I'm, thank you for bringing that up, Mike. That's probably the gripe that I think is even worse than my hate for Sylvester Stallone dying and coming back. They're definitely close. Megan Fox for some reason, is in this movie, and now she's an action star. Why, I don't know. She's always been the hot piece of ass in the action movie that the main guy hooks up with and takes home. Transformers, for example. We'll just go with that. So now she's the action star. But yet, not only is she the action star, she is now the fucking team leader when Sylvester Stallone dies, even though Jason Statham, who clearly is being groomed to be the team leader since the very first fucking movie gets looked over and his girlfriend who hasn't been in any of this shit and nobody knows is the fucking leader of the expendables now that makes me really mad honestly i think it makes me more mad than stallone dying and coming back dude i was like i was like what i can't even what is going on right now i mean you're in you're in some transformer movies you're in like a horror movie You've done like 
uh, what the Ninja Turtle movie from Michael Bay. It's like, why all of a sudden are you an action star? And then how the heck would you be the leader? Like exactly, Mike. Exactly. Now, not to make it sound bad, but it was one of the most fun scenes in the movie. Oh, the wrestling scene, Matt. No, no, uh, Fifty Cent. Oh, okay. Or Fifty Cent. Fifty Cent. So I, I like that he's in the movie. I don't like that they just kind of threw him in there. He didn't really get much of an introduction like other Expendables have in the past. You know, I like that he's in there. He's not the world's greatest actor. We all know that. We don't expect him to be the world's greatest. He was very stale. He was very hollow. But he did okay. I'll say okay. But one of the funniest movies was the um, movies. One of the funniest parts of the movie was the uh, forklift driving down the ship playing one of his jams oh yes that was that was pretty ridiculous that was fucking hilarious that was one of the funniest parts of the movie with that shit going on and so i'm okay with that but i i just i don't feel that they did 50 cent a service he should have had a better intro if he's going to be a part of the team from here on out give us more just like megan fox she just showed up and she's there he's very much similar except for he got a little something. She got nothing. She's just the queen bee of the Expendables now, I guess. Yeah, dude. I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, Matt, the, the nuke scene, uh, with with everything that's ridiculous about the movie, I was just like, yeah, sure, why not? They're going to survive it. Everybody, every everything's going to be fine. Well, and then they have a cargo ship that's supposed to be imitating a aircraft carrier, and it's probably not even a quarter the size of a fucking aircraft carrier. Yeah, dude, the the painted runway on it or whatever was so terrible. Right. Dude, I th- and the cardboard cut out F-16s. Or F- I don't even think they were F-18s. I think they were F-16s with single fins. Yeah, that makes no sense either. Yeah. And then, like, Andy Garcia's character shows up and he's, like, double cross, you know, like he's the secret agent or whatever. I was like, yeah, whatever. Sure. Yeah, but the thing is, is that's, like, Andy Garcia's thing now. Like anytime there's a double cross and you see him in a movie, just know he's going to double cross the main characters, period. And so that was extremely, extremely predictable. Now, one thing that I did kind of find fun, though, was the second set piece on the ship. I liked how they approached it and how they went about it, mostly probably Statham. But do you know what it really, really, really reminded me of, not to get off topic again, Mike? Um, I, I, I think... I think I know what you're going to say, dude. I, video games. Yes, sir. It reminded me of like, yes, there's a lot of Call of Duty similar stuff, but it reminded me back of my college days of playing PlayStation 2 on uh, SOCOM, U.S. Navy SEALs, because that was like SOCOM's big thing was climbing up on you know a ship and fighting it out with a bunch of other guys or uh, like Rainbow Six. That was another one. And it really it really had that feel, that whole ship and going through it and how they were doing it on, you know, how they were shooting people and stuff. I kind of like that. I thought that was fun. I, I actually got the same vibe a little bit. I'm like, is, this seems like a video game. Yeah, it, it really, really brought me back to kind of the SOCOM days. It really wanted me to kind of play some Call of Duty or something. But, you know, I don't have time for video games because I got to put the podcast out and edit the podcast and, you know do the website and yeah, the yeah all those things the social medias and and sell houses yeah and but i don't have children so it's okay yeah it's fine yep okay mike go ahead what else are you going to add about expendables 4 before we give up on this shit and we tell everyone our first movie for harvest horror fest um i don't know man i'm trying to think if there's anything else that i missed i feel like we covered just about oh Dude, I love the little mystery character who's like, I don't kill people anymore. And then he starts coming out and killing and kicking ass. He was awesome. Now, Oh, yeah. That, well, that was the other martial artist. Yeah. Dude, he was awesome. No, yeah. He was a great character. I, again, there's three pretty... Well, take Megan Fox. I'm sorry. Her character was shit. There's two pretty decent characters that they could have explained more or three you know they had um antonio banderas's son the guy that likes golden showers um oh that yeah. was how they danced around antonio banderas not being it it's his son that 
that instead came in, which is fine. I would have rather had Antonio Banderas, but at least they explained like how he came into the Expendables. But yeah, I would have liked to have seen more backstory, more than two sentences of who these people are. A paragraph would be nice. Maybe a quick clip. I don't know. Just give us a little bit more of who these people are and why. Here's the reason, Mike. Why should I give a shit? That's why I want more backstories. Why should I care about these people? Yeah, no, no. The It would have been nice to have a little bit more backstories because uh, his seemed cool. Um, whatever, the, get the, the ship captain guy or like the boat guy who got Jason Statham to the to the ship or whatever like you know i don't know his se- uh, seemed cool decha huh decha d-e-c-h-a was the character name i'm pretty sure yeah deca maybe i'm pronouncing it probably wrong deca i don't know yeah 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 that 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 character that that was cool like yeah there's just there's just things man just things um but you know, low expectations. It, it wasn't hard for them to breach them for me, so I was, I was okay. Well, I don't know, Mike. I I I wanted more well-known characters. Like, if Terry Crews was in this, I don't need an explanation who Terry Crews is and why he's important in the Expendables because he's been in the motherfucker for a while. You know, um, Antonio Banderas, same thing. He had great buildup in three, even though three was garbage. Um, but. No one's here. I mean, even in three, you had um, Ronda Rousey and that whole other team where they spent half the movie collecting them up and explaining who they are and why he's picking them. Yeah. That made sense. In this, they're just like, okay, here's the new people. It's like, no, even get Ronda Rousey and those fucks back because at least we know why. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to have all that that, that explain explanation, exposition. Well, because they didn't explain they didn't give us anything. So that's why I think this movie is a failure even more is because why do I care? Yeah. Well, I mean, they're just expendable. Okay. So I'm not supposed to care about the characters either. So guess what? Then I don't care about the movie. Yeah. Matt, Matt it's a, it's a lot like uh, fast and furious, except instead of saying like family, they just say expendable a lot. And those make money and this doesn't. <laughs> Well, the last one didn't make as much money. So, anyway, um, and I don't think this one's going to make as much money. Uh, Matt, are you ready to give this wonderful theatrical release your rating? Sure, Mike. And it's probably too high. It's probably higher than yours, actually. I'm betting. Dude, no way. I, I Well, then now you got me curious. I want to hear yours first. Uh, I, I'm giving it two and a half. Dude, it is higher than mine. What the hell, dude? That doesn't make any fucking sense because you like this movie better than I do. Two and a half is a fucking D. No, dude. I'm giving it a two. I'm giving it a two. Okay, do you know why I gave it a two and a half, Mike? Uh, you like the wrestling scene with Megan Fox. Oh, who didn't like that? I mean, oh, you know what? Speaking about Megan Fox, that's another one that caught me off guard. They must have had like an intern do her makeup on the first day or something, because when she's introduced, her makeup looks fucking horrible, dude. Like it looks really just. It looks like they got like a trowel and just like we're like foundation, 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 and just threw it all over her face. And then here's Crayola for I. I mean, it was it was really bad. And then the rest of the movie, it looks decent. But God, I mean, I don't. I'm not one to pay attention to makeup, but holy fuck, it was bad. Oh man, maybe they were maybe they were trying out the new interns. So okay, I gave Expendables three just because I just watched it two, and this is better than three. Not as good as one and two, so I gave it a two and a half because it's a little it's above three and three was terrible. Maybe I'm gonna have to knock three down to like a one and a half and give <laughs> this bitch a two. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, what whatever, man. I I think the audience gets the point. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's out in the ether. I gave it a two and a half, and that's being generous. As you see, Mike liked it and gave it a two. Explain that one to me, people. A two is still a D. That's actually on the brink of an F. Yeah, dude, it's it's not that great. It's just it's just okay. Yeah, but I figured you're saying it's okay. You would have given an okay score like a two and a half or a three. That's an okay score. 
Matt, you're so silly. I'm sorry if I think logically about the rating system, Mike. I apologize. (laughs) That's right. You better. And Matt, with that, we we should talk about our new uh, Harvest Horror Fest that's coming up. Mike, it's not ours. I mean, yes, I'm here. And I do most of the work. But it is your baby. This is what you love. This is what you live for. You could go the rest of the year without doing a podcast except for the month of October. And this year, the month of October and a little bit in November. Mike, next week kicks off the sixth annual Harvest Horror Fest brought to you by whatever pumpkin beer Mike buys for that week. Um, Why don't you go ahead and tell us our very first film, which is a theater film. All right, Matt. So uh, we are going to be watching and kicking off this sixth annual Harvest Horror Fest with Saw 10. Um, I know there's been a lot of Saws, but this one actually looks like it has a little bit better plot than the last five or so. So I'm, I'm excited to see it. Our, our main character, uh, John Kramer, has been dying for like the last uh, 10 movies. But this time it looks good. It, like I don't know. It looks like it's going to be uh, a little bit more poignant. I don't know. It looked good. So we'll see, Matt. So, Mike, um, do you know how many of the Saw films I have seen? I'm sure you saw the first one. I did. I did. And I really liked the first one. I thought it was fantastic. Oh, dude, it was brilliant. It was like a master's class in how to make something with like one set and like very low budget, but still be very compelling. Oh, it was fantastic. It was a master class in storytelling. It was very, very good. Very, very good story. Um, and that is uh, almost 20 years old. It's 19. It'll be 20 next year. Um, it came out in 2004 and I did see it in the theater. So I was in college and I saw it. Yeah, I saw it in the theaters, too. I loved it. Oh, yeah. It was fantastic. But, Mike, I have seen Saw that... Yeah, Seesaw. There we go. I Seesaw um, 1, 2, and 3. I haven't seen anything since 3. And 3, I thought, was pretty fucking ridiculous, so I kind of stopped. And I really didn't care. I was just like, you know, there's only so much murder porn I can watch. And I had enough, and I haven't seen it since. Do I need to go back and watch all the others, Mike? Because what I've read and what I've heard, uh, I haven't listened to any reviews, but I've read and heard some people talking about stuff here and there on movie pods and things like that that I like to follow, is that basically Saw 10 really is like Saw 2. Like it really probably should, in the timeline, take place after the original. Oh, see, dude, that, that's good. That That's good stuff right there. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, man, I don't know. There's... There's a character or two that may be reoccurring that'll show up in this, but, uh, you know, man, I'll, I'll fill in the gaps for you. It won't be bad. Okay, because I don't even know where I could see the other ones. I mean, probably Shudder is where it's at, and we don't have that. Oh, yeah. I don't, yeah. No, I don't know if they have any bundled collection or anything. They, they probably are about to. Well, I think they're combining, because Shudder is owned by AMC, so I think they're combining AMC, Shudder, and maybe even possibly... HBO Max, because a lot of stuff from AMC Plus has been popping up on HBO Max. So I think we might be getting our first real kind of big merger, other than Hulu and Disney Plus, which didn't happen. They're still separate products. For now. For now, yeah. Yeah, they're probably going to merge those some bitches too soon. Um, But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I don't know the story of Saw super well. I don't remember a lot of it. But the main character basically is dying and he goes in this new one, he goes and he gets um, surgery, which turns out to be fake. And he's dead, I think, in the fourth one. Or is he dead in the third one? Um, It's like, I think it's. It's I it's I think it's the fourth one or or maybe the very end of the third one. I I'd have to I'd have to revisit those series as well, man. I just remember that he has an apprentice he's training and he dies that in film and I saw that one. And so that's why people are saying he's still alive and this is what happened between the original and him trying to be saved and save his cancer or whatever. So that's why they say this would be 
in the timeline fits as a second one. But again, I don't know. I'm just guessing here based on what I've heard. We'll find out, you know, this week because we're going to go see it on Thursday. And then I'm going to talk about it on the radio on Friday. All right. Well, that sounds good, dude. I'm going to talk about it, too, on the pod. So let's get it done, dude. I'm excited. I'm excited for our Harvest Horror Fest, dude. And drink some more pumpkin beers. All right, Mike. Next week. All right. Harvest Horror Fest, 6th Annual. Okay, with that, I guess we'll let everybody go. Um, don't really watch Expendables 4 in the theater, but, you know, if if you had to, I guess you can. But, I mean, you should go to the theater, so maybe just go there, buy some popcorn, and then leave. Or watch another movie you've already seen that's much better than this that's still at the theaters. Well, that's true. That's true. There's nothing wrong with seeing something good twice. No, no. All right. Well, I guess with that, um, Matt, I'll, I'll wrap it up. You, you don't have anything else, right? Sir, no, sir. Okay. Well, uh, with that, uh, make sure to follow us on the socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, and um, we'll catch you on the next pod. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you next week. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now go out and catch a movie. Hi, everyone. This is Ma Hinshaw loses her cookies or spinach. Anyway, episode 31. Uh... Expendables 4. I hope everyone's having a good evening. Whoops, what was that? Anyway. Hi, Matt. Mom, how do you know that the listener is listening to this in the evening? Maybe they're listening to it in the morning, or maybe they're listening to it at lunch, or maybe they're listening to it at 7 at night. I don't know. Maybe it's nighttime, or... How do you know, Mother? I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> All right. I'm figuring they're working during the day and and stuff. Okay. <laughs> so well, this is Ma fun. Hinshaw loses her cookies, episode number thirty-one, done by my eighty-one-year-old mother, Ma Hinshaw. Do you think someone that's going to be enthralled by your podcast is going to be listening at night? Now, they might listen at 3.30 in the morning when they first wake up because that's your audience. Really? 3.30 in the morning? Well, Mom, what time do old people get up? You're old. I don't get up at 3.30, so I'm not old. I sleep till 7. <laughs> I don't want to get wow, up. Wow, 7. Is that yeah. because you have way too many margaritas the night before, you lush? Nope. No, I wish I... Nah, that's okay. Anyway, no, it's no. It's just enough margaritas? Just enough, yes. Just a titch or a gallon, as the case may be. <laughs> anyway. Yes, back to the expendables. Um, And I think it was written by, was it written by Sylvester Stallone? No, it was not. It not was this not. one. No, it was not. Uh, well, that's what's wrong. <laughs> if you want to know the writers, you can listen to the Real Film Nerds podcast that just well, preceded this I'm... one. But yeah, it's Kurt Wimmer, Tag, Tad, Tag, Tad, Daggerheart, and Max Ooh. Adams. Well, you know what? They need to go back and, and learn some more writing. <laughs> well, no. It, well, all right. Written... So you're going to open up your podcast that way by immediately slamming the writing. Fine. Let's do this thing, old bitty. Why yeah, yeah. don't you like Expendables 4? Well, anyway, I mean, I like the bar scene, which is how it starts out. And that was all cool, you know. And then uh, I was kind of proud of Sly for not coloring his hair. So it least... didn't start out in a bar scene. It didn't. It started, started out, out in the desert. 
That's oh, it's starting. Well, it so got are you that just going to tell the listeners about the whole movie and how it starts <laughs> and all that, or are you just going to tell your opinions? You need to make no. up your mind. Is this just, Ma Hinshaw sh- story time or is this Ma Hinshaw opinion time? Okay, this is Ma Hinshaw's opinion. I like the bar scene. I thought that was fun. Well, of course and, you do. You're a drunk. Well, it was cool and it was nice, and I thought it was really cool. When Sly got on a motorcycle, my gosh, at his age, being able to sit on a motorcycle, that's amazing. Okay. Anyway. You sit on something similar like a motorcycle all the time. Oh, come on. My wheelchair doesn't count. (laughs) Do you really think Sylvester Stallone got on a motorcycle? I think he did. Okay. Don't tell me that was a stunt double. Oh, I'm sure it was. Why wouldn't it be? Well, he, I'm sure he doesn't have arthritis. He moves Mom, he would probably break a hip trying to throw his leg <laughs> over a motorcycle. Oh, come on. I bet it was him. I got to Google that one. <laughs> well, when you figure out how to work Google, you let me know. I will I'll let you know. Okay. But anyway, that that was fun at the start and everything and then after that i got kind of bored and i fell asleep a lot in the middle okay and then let me see toward well the last half of the movie they were on a ship and that was pretty interesting a lot of fighting a couple of really good kills lots of blood uh, yucky stuff, you know. Uh-oh. And uh, they're on this really huge ship, and they're running around and fighting with all the different bad guys and stuff. And Dolph Lundgren, he was really cool and cute. I like him. And uh, okay, here I've got a blank now. The dude that was the main. Uh, fighter and it wasn't sly it was hmm, what's his jason name? statham jason statham and i ne- states some with a and, and i always forget how to pronounce it i'm sorry okay anyway he how did many all margaritas that. did you have tonight holy crap i only had one today and it was at my brunch so don't even talk and was it 64 ounces? Uh, well, it was large. But I don't know. That's how many... a, I'm taking that as a yes. So you have been oh. drunk since brunch. No, I haven't. But anyway. You're a brunch of drunks. <laughs> a brunch of whatever. Oh, but they're happy to see Ma coming. Yes, they say, all right, get her usual. Anyway. Yeah, you open uh, the door. They're like, there's the lush. Cha-ching. Mm-hmm. There it is, dollar ninety nine margarita. I'm all over it. Yep. So anyway, and he does a lot of fighting on a lot of different levels of the ship and all this stuff. There's some uh, R-rated uh, stuff, some rude language, and there's some kind of sexy talk and stuff, which I should not say. And, but, uh, anyway, and then just a heck of a lot of fighting and, um, I'm not going to, I was going to say I was disappointed in the end guys, but you need to watch the movie to see the end. You don't want to tell your adoring fans about the end of the film. Well, I think I when I think about it, it just doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay. Well, what are and, you thinking about? Well, elaborate sudden, to your fans. Oh, okay, fan. <laughs> okay, so here they are, and they finally, you know, the ship is going to blow, and then here comes the helicopter with um. Sly flying the helicopter and uh, saving the people and stuff. And then 
an atomic bomb goes off and blows up the ship, which if it did, it would blow the doggone helicopter way far, way out, way wherever, or it would sink into the sea. And I had an issue with that. Well, the ship was underwater. Yeah. And the atomic bomb was on the ship. Right. Mm -hmm. That was underwater. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's the problem. It's not the fact that Sylvester Stallone came back to life. Well, that was kind of strange how he planted this other bad guy in the plane that crashed, you know, and made it look like it was him and all that. Oh, now I've even given away more stuff. Well, anyhow, that's okay. I just had issues with the end, so... All right, that is my, um, um, I guess that's about all I'm going to say about the movie. Well, what about Megan Fox? What about 50 Cent? What about, you know, his song that came on? And what about all the other things? The desert, you didn't even talk about the desert. You talked about the bar. Jeez, surprise. Ma Hinshaw talks about getting shit-faced again. Hey, cut it out. And they didn't. I don't think they did. Oh, they just had a few. But anyhow. How well, how would they not get shit faced when Sylvester Stallone's character died and he was their all all their best friend? Well, that's true. You're right. You know. But anyway, oh oh yeah. Megan Fox, she was I thought it was kind of strange that she took over the group, you know. But okay, you know. Why didn't Jason take over the group? But no, she did and told them what to do and where to go and all that stuff, you know. Good. She was good at it, you know, but that was still different, okay? Did you find Megan Fox sexually attractive? Heck no. (laughs) Not even the part where her and Jason Statham were romping around in bed? Oh, no. Or is that the part you slept through? Oh, no, I didn't sleep through that. No, that was okay. You know, that was fine. Okay, Ma, what about nudity? I didn't notice any. Okay. So, you know, darn. Oh, well. Anyway, that's all. That's all. You're not going to, that's it. That's all you're going to talk about the expendables for. Or is it expend four bulls? Because that's how they spell it on the IMDb's. They do. <laughs> well, yeah, they have the four in the name. So it's expend oh, four bulls. Right. That's right. Instead of an A. Yeah. But it's spe- expendables four is how I am pronouncing it. If you have some time and to, you know, go to a movie and you want to do something and all that, it's okay. It's interesting. I did fall asleep in the middle several times. And, um, I mean, go and see for yourself what you think about the end. I'm having a weird time with that. But anyway. What you're saying, saying, Ma, is if you need a good nap. Right. If you need a good nap, go to this movie. Well, why not just go home and nap? It's free there. Well, there's no popcorn. I mean, I guess you can get microwave popcorn, but it's not the same. No, there's no popcorn. There's no soda. There's. You know, I'm sure people have sodas at home. Oh, I know they do. Candies. Yeah. You really think people should spend 10, 15, 20, 30, $130 to go see this piece of trash? Well, oh, heck, go ahead. Help out the movies. But you know what? I told people, and Mysterious Mike Talon agreed with me. What? It's just go see another movie that you've already seen that's really good and just see it twice. Instead of seeing this. Oh, that is something else. Oh, my gosh. Or you can wait until this Thursday when Ma Hinshaw's favorite movie of all time is going to be released (laughs) in the theaters to kick off the sixth annual Harvest Horror Fest, Ma Hinshaw's favorite time of the year, which I don't understand. When did you decide you like horror movies? I grew up in your home. I've you've been a part of my life for almost 42 years. And I've never heard you say I love horror movies. And you said you love them on Friday. Uh, were you drunk? No, I was not. I was 
perfectly sober. I had a coffee. Were you anyway, stoned? I guess since I've become old, you know, maybe I've become more vicious or something. Or is it because you're so old, nothing scares you now? Or maybe you're waiting to be that old person that gets slayed in a Saw 10 movie? That might be it. <laughs> you want to die a horrible death? No, actually. If I could help it, I'd like to avoid that. But okay. Well, how do you want to die, Ma? How do I know? I don't know. I know how I want to die. You don't know how you want to die? No, I don't. I just don't want to create off a cliff in a car. That I don't want to do. So you're not going to Thelma and Louise it? Nope. Well, this is what I think is going to happen. I'm going to be just going about my normal life. I'm going to be like, I don't know, going and showing a house or, you know, cleaning my car, working on my Jeep or something. And there's going to be like a satellite or like an airplane or a small child. I don't know. Something terrible is going to fall out of the sky at high altitude and land on my face and kill me. That's how I'm going to die. I guarantee it. How about an asteroid? That would work. That's fine. Hmm. Maybe it'll be one of Elon Musk's satellites. That could be it. Could be. Or, again, it could be like some man gets mad at his baby and like throws it out of the biplane he's flying overhead or something during like an air show. And I'm not paying attention, but they're over my house and I'm just washing the Jeep and that's it. That, that, that is ridiculous. And I, I want to see you live to be at least 85 and 85. That's older than you now. Why are you, why are you, why are you wishing that horribleness on me? Because I am. There's a lot more movies to see out there. <laughs> well, yeah, hopefully. I mean, especially since it sounds like the strike is coming to an end, at least they're in negotiations now. Is final it? final negotiations. Yes, the oh. the writers actor the writer wag the writers of America Guild. I think is what it is. Oh, they're in discussions now. That is not the SAG AFTRA, but the they are a part of the whole strike. And so, if they come to a deal, then probably the other two organizations will also within the next weeks. They're saying probably by the end of October, the strike will be over, which means we should get movies by next summer. Spring is going to be fucking awful, but we hopefully will have summer blockbusters again next year. Oh, that would be good. That would be great. Yeah. And whoever wrote this movie, well, good luck with that. But anyway. <laughs> All right, Ma. So how many reels, not reels, I do reels. You do cookies. Cookies. Ma, cookies. how many cookies do you give uh, expend for bulls or uh, expendables? Three, Four. three and a half. Three and a half? Mm-hmm. Man, what are you smoking? Well, hey, it, I mean... It was sort of entertaining. I mean, the fights were entertaining and all that. It's just, it was not all that great, but I wouldn't say, it was, I've seen worse. Okay, so. Not by much. And you still gave it a three and a half? Yeah, I gave it a three and a half. Honestly, I explain this to people because I get people that ask me on the street. They're like, I listened to Ma Hinshaw this morning. Oh, gee. Is she on crack with her ratings? And I'm like, no. You have to understand, Ma Hinshaw, if she gets out of the house and goes somewhere, that immediately is a three. Absolutely. You you got it. So in reality, this is half a half a cookie. Oh, (laughs) half a cookie? Uh Uh-oh. No, it's not that bad. Come on now. Okay, Ma. Say uh, go, it goes down to a, a three or something. I, I no, could, you can't change your rating. You spit it out. It's stuck forever on the internet for forever. The eternity. Okay. All right. That's it. Okay. Anyway. Well, and thank you, Matt, for the edification of like the strike and stuff. That would be good if we start getting. 
movies again. I believe people should always go to movies. Support the movie industry. We have to have somewhere to go to go out. Heck. Anyway. So next week, murder porn number one, Saw 10 or Saw X. Really? Saw 10? Yeah, it's the 10th film in the franchise. Oh my gosh, I'm not watching all 10 of them again. You haven't watched the first nine, have you? I I watched some, but I don't I don't remember which ones. Well, now. You know, you got until Thursday. Oh, okay. And they're all on Amazon Prime. So when we're done with this, go and start watching them. No, I'm going that's, not. Mine. That's probably 18 <laughs> hours of horror movies and murder porn. Oh no no, oh my god no, but I might watch like nine. <laughs> Uh, oh well okay well are you, anyway. are you done can i yes, take us I, out yes please take us out <laughs> please <laughs> well thank you everyone for listening to another way too long my hen child loses her cookies expendables four where the actors are as old as my hen <laughs> uh follow her on twitter even though, have you figured out how to tweet yet? Well, no, I've tried. But oh, I'm Lord. She was posting the Facebook the other day about the Cardinals games, and I said, you need to tweet this out. And there was about 20 people that said, yeah, you should tweet, you should tweet. Didn't happen. But if you want to oh, see tried. Ma Hinshaw's Twitter that the last time she tweeted, we had two different presidents. Uh, <laughs> that's Graham Graham SV, at Graham Graham SV. No, I'm, I'm, well, I Wait, tweeted I for you the other day, but seriously, I think the last time you tweeted, I think Obama was in office. Hey, you have to help me tweet because I don't mind tweeting, but I tried to tweet and I couldn't tweet. So. <laughs> well, you could just tell your phone. Well, except for you're not logged into the app on your phone. If you were logged into the app, you could just yell at your phone to tweet something. Ooh, but knowing that, you, you'll forget nice. to tell it to stop and post it and it'll be like, a paragraph, you know, screaming at the dog and then dad yelling about something. And then what you're having for dinner, Uh-oh. you know, maybe this whole thing is a bad idea. I, hey, no, you're going to have to help me with that, but you better end this podcast. People may be going to sleep. They're so bored. Well, what Eric, he's the only one that listens. <laughs> I know. Okay. Okay. All right. Fine. <laughs> follow, follow Ma Hinshaw. She doesn't do Instagram. Uh, she does Twitter, kind of. She has a Facebook. Graham mm-hmm. Graham SV is her Twitter. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you again, everyone, for listening to this tripe. And we will be back next week with Harvard, Harvard, Harvard. <laughs> Why do I combine words? See, this is the problem. When I talk all day, showing houses, and then I do a podcast, and then I do your podcast. Mom, that's a mm-hmm. lot of talking. My mouth is shut. Oh, okay. Join us next week for our sixth annual Harvest Horror Fest. First pod of the event, Saw X or Saw 10 or whatever. Thank you again, everyone, for listening. Uh, Sorry, this podcast is garbage. Bye.